Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are on to week four of our AE 511 class. So let's jump right into it and take a look at where we're headed this week in week four. So if you remember uh, at the end of week three we started this discussion on frequency domain analysis and we're basically going to extend that idea and basically look at some of the core ideas behind frequency domain analysis this week. That is the idea of Bode plots. So Bode plots are used uh, all over control theory and dynamic system analysis and they're one of the primary tools for helping understand the frequency response of a system. So I want to talk about what these things are and then we're going to take a little short detour to talk about the resonant frequency of a dynamic system, which is, uh, as you can probably imagine, part of the frequency response of the system, but it's the response at a very specific frequency where you basically get uh, kind of maximal response. So I just want to talk about that here. But really, the meat of this discussion is once we understand what is a Bode plot and what information is there, we really want to try to gain an understanding and some intuition behind how different components of a given transfer function or a given dynamic system contribute to that overall individual Bode plot by looking at how individual components of a Bode plot make up or comprise the overall composite system. So you can see this is a little bit longer, almost two and a half hours, um, because I do want to spend some time going over that and looking at what these things are and how individual parts contribute to the larger whole. I think, like I said, this is going to give us some intuition into how we can build up and think about adding via superposition different components of a complex system, basically break it down into simple little parts and see how each one of those little parts uh, contribute to the overall system. So that's our game plan for this week is basically, yeah, finishing up our discussion on frequency domain analysis by focusing pretty heavily on um, the Bode plots. So, with that being said, let's take a look at where this falls into the homework. So, if I pull up homework four, here we go. So, here's homework four. Um, the first problem is actually kind of interesting. It is uh, not so much of a, you're not actually going to have to do any calculations, but what I'd like you to do is go look at some specifications of actually a pair of speakers. So I actually, I actually have a pair of these speakers um, here at home and I've posted the spec sheet on the GitHub page for this, uh, for this week. So again, if you look in the description of this video, there is going to be a link to the GitHub page here. Let me see if I can put this off uh, to one side and we can kind of stare at them side by side. Maybe that will be helpful, but it'll take you over here. Okay, and on the GitHub page, you'll see that I posted this PDF, which is this spec sheet. So all you want to come do is come over here, look at these things. You can see there are these big giant speakers. And what I'm asking for is within this discussion or the context of frequency domain analysis or frequency response or anything like that that we're looking at this week, come over here and look at page two. Page two has a whole bunch of specifications and some of these specifications are related to frequency response. So just look over this, maybe pick out a few of these that have something to do with frequency response and talk about what these probably mean, right? You don't have to get this exactly right. I just want you to have a rough idea and make an educated guess at what are some of these things. So again, don't worry about things like how big this speaker is or how heavy. I don't care about the physical properties of it. I care more about the frequency response capabilities or um, characteristics of it. So some of these, like for example, if you start reading these, aha, like frequency response, some of this stuff, this is going to start making some sense once you watch the videos over here, right? So this is one of these homeworks where I would actually recommend maybe watch all the uh, the videos first and then come tackle the homework because then some of these parameters are going to make sense. So that's what part A is. Is Part A is just look at the spec sheets here on page two, um, or excuse me, look at the specs on page two of the overall spec sheet document and just explain what some of these might mean. Then let's move our discussion down um, to page three, four, and five. So if you come over here, page three, aha, look at this. This has something that is maybe potentially related to Bode plots or some of the things that we're talking about. Here's another one that sort of looks like it as well. And then here's something else on that. Again, I, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but some of this is going to start looking familiar once you watch the videos and have the lectures. So what of those graphs are relevant? What are they telling you? What kind of information? Now that we understand Bode plots, we'll have an ability to sort of interpret what some of these graphs and um, specifications mean. And then lastly, on, uh, on the last page of the document, in fact, you might have to click on more pages or just download the entire thing. Um, you'll see there's a big block diagram right here. And again, 
same thing. We talked about how little individual pieces can make up the response or the behavior of a larger component. So you can see right here, here's a bunch of little pieces and there's some stuff that maybe have something to do with frequency response. So again, just maybe explain this at a very high level. Again, you don't need to go down in excruciating detail and tell me exactly what this power transformer does or what this fuse and this power switch do. I'm more interested in things like, like let me see if I can zoom in on this. Oops, sorry, nah, nah, zoom is gonna be a little bit difficult here, but things like this, like this thing called low cut or contour or high pass, some of these things are going to be related to this frequency response discussion. And that's what I want people to focus on on problem one. So again, this is a, a little bit more free form problem. Just talk about what this is doing. Why do we care about frequency uh, response when we're looking at speakers? <laughs> okay, so that's problem one. Let's go ahead and now look at problem two. So problem two is um, now we're gonna get a little bit more precise. I'm gonna give you a very specific transfer function right here. It looks like this, 10 over S plus 100, okay? Now for part A, what you can do is Forget anything about frequency domain analysis. We talked about it basically in weeks, uh, I think one and two, um, as well as in AE501, right? How someone can give you now a transfer function and you can go ahead and compute the response to some input like this using the Laplace technique, right? So you can basically Laplace transform this input, multiply it by the transfer function, get the Laplace version of the output, do the uh, partial fraction expansion, or heck, at this point, just use um, an inverse Laplace transform formula or function to basically get this. But all I'm looking for in part A is just analytically compute the response of the system Y of T. So if you put in this input, what kind of output do you get out of this system? That's all we're asking for in part a okay now part b is saying okay what about just the steady state response so that's the key aspect here this is how part b differs from part a part a is the overall system response that's everything that's transient plus steady state part b i just want the steady state response okay so um once you have that basically you can go ahead and uh, move on to the next part so in part c we would like to go ahead and compute the steady state response using frequency domain analysis techniques. So again, some of this discussion that we're gonna have over here will show you another way to basically obtain the steady state response of the system. So you don't need to do inverse Laplace transforms or ignore transients or anything like that. You can pretty much try to get this directly. So that's what I'm asking for in part C. Part C is basically another alternative way to calculate the same thing you're doing in part B. So uh, the next part is just, well, if, they, if they're the same, just compare them and make sure that they are the same. So spoiler alert, what you should be getting here in part D is these two plots should lie on top of each other pretty much, right? They should be the same thing. You should get the same response using part B or part C. Okay, now basically moving on, the rest of this, I'll let everyone read through these. There's a lot of words here, but they don't really mean um, that much. <laughs> All we're basically saying in short is, build your own Bode plot by hand. So this right here, again, once you go ahead and watch this video and this video, it's gonna make very clear, it's gonna be obvious what I'm asking for right here. This is the amplitude um, or the, um, yeah, the amplification or the magnitude response in decibels. I just want you to plot this versus frequency on a semi-log axis. And again, once you watch these videos, you'll know that when we say uh, a logarithmic axis, that's a log base 10, not a log base E. But again, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. If you watch these videos, a lot of this is gonna make sense. Same thing with part F. Part F is just, instead of plotting the magnitude here, plot the angle. Um, so again, part E and F is, you're just making your own Bode plot by hand. Okay, and then in part G then, well, we did it by hand, let's use a MATLAB tool to do this. So MATLAB has a function called Bode that will let you do this. So again, all we're doing here is just comparing. <laughs> okay, great, moving on. Um, all right, we got all this frequency domain discussion now, we got the Bode plot of the system. How about the DC gain of the system? So again, remember we talked about DC gain in a previous discussion, so feel free to go back and refresh your memory on what DC gain meant, but, um, you can compute that. And also, how can you get the DC gain by just looking at the Bode plot, right? So you're making a Bode plot in part E, F, and G, right? You're making a Bode plot. You should be able to read the, the DC gain right off that plot. Okay, um, and then lastly, 
Um, I, I'm just going to kind of pose this question for you here. Like most of the time, you see a function, a transfer function that looks like this: a over s plus a. People call this a low pass filter, and I want you to think about why. Why is this sometimes called a low pass filter? And I will also maybe make the slight note, notice that this is a little bit different than what, what I gave you up here. So the transfer function that you are examining is actually, it, it doesn't exactly match this, right? Because this should match this if it was truly in this form. So it's kind of not really exactly a low pass filter but something a little different and I'll let you think about what that is and what it does and again I'm happy to talk about this in office hours I think this is a lot of fun um, to interpret this okay so okay so that's problem two problem three is actually pretty similar but it's just like a different slightly more complicated transfer function so now let's look at a second order transfer function that is placed in standard second order form again we've talked about this already um, what the zeta and omega n, right? What the damping ratio and natural frequency mean, all that kind of good stuff. So again, all we're doing is computing the magnitude, computing the angle. And then what I'd like to do is let's plug in some numbers for damping ratio and natural frequency. So I'll give you a constant natural frequency at eight, but I want to vary the damping ratio between these values here, okay? So with that being said, I'd like to go ahead and now go ahead and in part C, Compute what does the system do if you excite it at the natural frequency at each one of these zeta values. So basically, you're looking for the magnitude at the natural frequency for, you're going to have to do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, right? And then same thing, I want to look at the difference between natural frequency and resonance frequency right here. So again, that's that discussion right here. A lot of times people kind of interchangeably use resonant frequency and natural frequency, but they're technically not the same thing. And I want to examine that right here in part D. Um, okay, so then um, part E is, uh, well, um, okay, how, what, what is the response at, e, at the, natu at the uh, excuse me, at the resonant frequency for each zeta? So again, this is the response at the resonant frequency what you're computing earlier is the response at the natural frequency and again this is just going to give us a little bit of a difference now of of how those two things are actually different and what do they mean and then finally last part is again make yourself a bode plot um but do it by hand don't use the bode plot command um and what you can then do is in also you can add all of these points that you found in parts C, D, and E, right? In here, you're computing a whole bunch of um, uh, responses at the natural frequency. Down here, you're computing responses at the resonant frequency. So you should be able to add a bunch of points to your plot. And basically what you're doing here is you're sketching out a Bode plot by hand, but you have exact values at certain um, at certain excitation frequencies. So it's helping you sketch this plot a little bit more cleanly. And then, you know, I, I probably should have put a last part, uh, like a part G, where you would compare with um, the Bode command. So maybe I'll encourage you to do this if you want in MATLAB, is throw this thing into MATLAB and have MATLAB actually compute the Bode plot for you and um, and see how, it com how close it comes to your, your manual hand sketch. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. With that, um, maybe I'll let everyone go and uh, email me if you have questions. Otherwise, I'll look forward to talking with everyone in office hours. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.